Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in. In this video, we're gonna do a full tear down of these BS32 carbs for the GS550. They definitely fought me. This is definitely not gonna be a uh, real exciting video. My goal here is to make this really informative, show you some of the struggles that I encountered with these, and then of course the processes I did to, uh, to clean them up and to do it, you know, uh, how I see fit. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video. All right guys, it is time to dig into these carburetors and make this thing run again. So one thing I did as soon as I pulled these off is I wanted to get an idea of how bad they were. So I went ahead and I removed one float bowl just to look inside. And immediately just after removing the screws, having, you know, the bowl being hard to get off, I knew these were gonna be pretty tough. So upon pulling the bowl, it was just full of varnished fuel, just looks like syrup inside. So these are gonna be a little bit tough. Now, before I get going on them, what I wanna do is get a little heat into them and that's gonna make disassembly hopefully a whole lot easier. So right now I have the ultrasonic cleaner heating up, it's almost there and what I'll do is I'll, I'll pull off maybe a couple bits if I can get the bowls off pretty, pretty easily, I'll pull those off and then allowing the heat and chemical to, to access the floats and whatnot. Hopefully it'll loosen them up because they're locked in there pretty solid. So this is not gonna be a super easy set, but we're gonna make it, we're gonna make it awesome. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get the bowls off. And then we'll, by that time, we'll uh, get these dunked into the tank and get them going. All right guys, so some basic information and the kind of the goal here um, these are some Makuni BS32s and these are CV carbs. Now, I'm, I'm sure you've seen that before. CV means constant velocity. I don't want to de-rack these. I know that the throttles are actually, uh, they seem to work perfectly fine. So I'm not going to take my time and, and worry about like restaking some of these, uh, you know, uh, flaps or anything like that. So what I want to do is pull the hats off, I'll pull the bowls off, I'll pull all the internals out that I can. And then from there, I also want to access the mixture screws. Now these are gonna be behind uh, a cover put on all these old bikes from the, with the EPA era. They just didn't want you messing with them just for you know legality issues, but you're gonna have to adjust these things. So I will show you guys how to drill these out and access the screws, remove them and Make sure everything is dialed. So anyway, let's get going. All right, so as we get rolling here, I wanna to talk to you guys about some tools and organization. This is incredibly important for this, and I see a lot of these jobs screwed up because people might lose a part. So go to your local Harbor Freight, O'Reilly's, whatever. Get one of these organizational trays. These are like four bucks, okay? These are a game changer for you. That allows you to break everything down. This carb goes in this slot, this carb goes in this slot you get the idea. This is a very important tool right here and well worth the money. The next thing is using the right tools on the carburetors themselves. So all of these Phillips head screws, these are Japanese industrial standard type uh, drivers. So I have JIS screwdrivers and I keep these in a completely separate uh, rack. A number two Phillips is not the same. Do not use a number two Phillips on these. You will strip these out. Now, unbelievably, I think this is the first set of carbs I've ever done that has uh, some virgin screws in here. These things have never been into. This bike only has 9,000 miles on it, and it's been sitting since the 80s. So um, these are gonna be very tight in here, and it's very important that you use the correct screwdriver. That way you don't strip them out. So let's see here. You can just crack them loose with this thing. If that was a number two Phillips, that might've stripped. So anyway, I have an impact, which I've linked before. This is a vessel. 
And then uh, I believe these are vessels as well, but this one's an impact driver, this one's a regular. Go ahead and grab some, I'll link those below. And then another real handy thing is these come from Motion Pro. Now this is a number three JIS bit and this is a number two JIS bit. All of these are gonna be pretty well number two. But I keep some of those handy with a low profile ratchet and that's going to come in handy when like you need some extra torque or if you're working on the bulls while this thing's still on the bike they come in handy so anyway what i'm going to use now just my drivers we'll get the bulls off this thing i'm going to go ahead and crack the uh, drain screws loose while they're mounted on here that way i don't have to try to fight them when they're in my hand Okay, we got the bowls off and these things are disgusting. The floats are just seized. You can see all the syrupy looking crap. Ugh. So I hate the smell of varnished fuel and this is disgusting. So anyway, I'm gonna hurry up, get these things in the tank that way the smell is at least dulled but we should start seeing a whole lot of crap come off of these things and then from there i'll probably go ahead and pull off the tops and we'll do a full disassembly So as far as what I use within my ultrasonic cleaner here, I go with some Mean Green, which won't uh, turn your aluminum a different color, it won't darken it. So I get this at like Dollar General, but I believe you can get it at Walmart. So I'll do mostly water, obviously, and then in this instance, since I know I want this heavy, I'm going with like a half the gallon of Mean Green. And then I'll put some Dawn soap in there and that helps, uh, helps loosen things up even further. But that's what I've been doing. I heat this thing to uh, 50 Celsius, 50 degrees Celsius. And then whenever I do the main carb um, ultrasonic sessions, I'll do two 10 minute sessions of it. So as of now, we're not gonna try to agitate it. I'm just trying to get some heat in there and uh, let everything kind of expand and, and loosen up hopefully and just make disassembly a little easier. All right, just pull these things out of the tank. Floats move, so. Gonna go ahead and start disassembly. I'll do the bottom half first. I'll pull, then I'll flip it over and then do the top. So let's get started. This is gonna be, it's still gonna fight me. I know that. I have a small hammer. Start with the uh, floats here. Try to be really careful on these.
still wanting to fight me. All right. This is to be expected with uh, some carbs that have been sitting like this long with, uh, with fuel in them. Yay. All right. I'll put a little, put a little penetrating oil on them and then we'll save them for here in a little bit. These are those little rubbers I'm going to replace. They do soften up with a little bit of heat, but you never know. Yeah, this one's completely just deteriorated. Blech. tell this is gonna be a lot of fun <laughs> So what I've noticed here, these two carbs are definitely going to fight me a little bit more. Now, the bike leaning on its left side, you know, for so many years means that any fuel that comes through that petcock that after the seals go bad means that the fuel is going to naturally want to gravitate towards the left two carbs because, you know, it's only going to be draining in and then draining in and then gravity takes effect. So what I've also noticed is that the oil has fuel in it so it's up higher so that means that it definitely ran into these carbs and ran past and i i also have another confirmation of that because if i look at the back of the intake valves on on these two cylinders they just look a lot more cruddy than these like um like in a way that only varnish fuel could do so this side's just going to keep fighting me a little bit but uh i will prevail We'll just keep working at it. Well, I'm sure it's because I was recording, but I broke a float tower off. Damn. I've never done that. 
first time. That's gonna suck. I gotta figure out how to fix that. Mm. So we're going to go ahead and disassemble these. There is a C-clip inside. You have, to, you have to compress it, pull that out, and then there is a uh, needle retainer in here. So there's a C-clip. Needle retainer. And then the needle's gonna come out and there's gonna be a specific orientation for all the components here. All right, the needle sits on top of the spring. On top the needle, on top the clip, you have a little spacer. Below the clip, below the clip there is a, another spacer. And then the washer. So that's the assembled orientation right there. Now it's important whenever you put these things back together that the needle does wiggle. That's very important because if it's bound, then this can drag within the emulsion tube and cause the float or the uh, the slide to kind of stick and hang, and that'll cause all kinds of weird running issues you're trying to track down. All right. So the carbs are back in the ultrasonic cleaner here. They're up to temperature, and I want to go ahead and run this thing for about like 10 minutes to try to agitate it. I still have to get the uh, slides out of two of the carbs and, and then uh, go from there. It's They're fighting me pretty good, but uh, we will prevail. So I want to show you what this looks like immediately. So I'm going to hit the button. It's going to get real annoying. This thing makes a lot of noise, but look for all the sediment and stuff just starting to work up. just instantaneously. I'm gonna let that run for 10 and come back. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pull apart the choke circuit now. So you loosen each four little screw here and then that allows you to remove the entire shaft and then from there you actually unscrew the choke circuit itself. You don't have to take these all the way out. There's just a detent that you'll see. So you just need to make sure that this piece can slide on the shaft. There we go. Now it doesn't look like I can actually pull the choke circuits all the way out, but it does seem like they move freely. So at least me extending them out, opening up that passage will uh, be beneficial whenever I do another round of ultrasonic with these. And I know the absolute correct way to do it is to go ahead and separate the, separate the rack, which, you know, may end up happening. We'll see how, we'll see how well they clean up. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove the uh, the pilot jets in this thing. So those are located in this orifice here. The main jet is always under the slide. These two are going to be the troublesome ones. All right, I want to go ahead and get the main jet emulsion tubes out. So I'm just going to thread in the main jet a little bit. Not so it seats. Is that a tap or two? And it pushes it down. Now for getting the needle seats out, I haven't really found a good way of doing these without at least chewing them up a little bit, but you can kind of catch a screwdriver on the edge, give some taps, and kind of tell when they start moving. And then from there, take some needle nose, like some, uh, some ones with some teeth on it. A little twist. There we are. And that's that little pre-filter I want to change. I see some of these that are just deteriorated. These ones are probably okay, but we're going to put new ones on anyway. So... All right, so one of the final pieces of the puzzle is getting these mixture screws out. So these have a cover on top of them. A lot of these CV carbs you'll see will have that cover. So the way I'm going to go about this is I'm going to use like an eighth inch drill bit and I'm gonna tape off. So just a little bit of it is showing. Um, drill through that and then what I'll do is I'll take a little four millimeter tap and uh, I'll start feeding that in there. And a lot of times what happens for me is I'll just start trying to get that tap, get those threads cut, and it'll actually break that loose, which is good. And then I can just kind of pull it out. So worst case scenario though, is I just feed in a bolt, put a, put a pair of vice grips on that, and then I can pull it out with, with the vice grips using the bolts, using the threads I just cut into this cover. So it's really important. You do not go very far in here because the screw is just below this cover. So go ahead and put some tape on a drill bit as a little guide. Feed 
gentle. See if you guys can see this. See, just barely uh, got one thread in it. And there's your, there's your little plug. even twist it off by hand. They don't take a whole lot. Now we came off with the drill bit. Well, that's about the only thing that's gone smooth on these carbs so far. Now what I'm doing here, I'm just making sure that they all rotate. So what you want to do is maintain the settings that these are at currently. So these are preset from the factory. They all should be a certain amount of turns out from seated. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count basically the flats, just, you know, count the rotations I'm going to gently screw it inwards until it seats until you feel that resistance do not crank down on it so however many turns it takes to seat it is how many turns you want to set it to whenever these go back together so I'm gonna go ahead and start on this one so half one one and a half it's about two and an eighth. And the reason you don't want to seat that thing very hard is because that little tip of the needle there can break off and that'll ruin your day. Also within this, there's going to be a spring and a lot of times there's going to be some kind of either washer. Yep, so there's a little washer. And then, yep, this one does have an O-ring. Some air screws they don't need to seal, so are sealed quite like a fuel screw. A little rubber washer. Very important these things go back in the correct way. The best tool I've found for getting these out is, in fact, these tweezers. So they actually kind of, they spring outward. And uh, these are actually for a remote control car kit that I had. But this allows me to go in and actually get on the inside of the washer and inside of the O-ring and then just pull it out like that instead of trying to, like, fish it out otherwise. 
half, one, one and a half, two, two and an eighth. All right, so we couldn't get the uh, pilot jets out of these two, so I went ahead and I just uh, grabbed my easy out here, a little 564 bit, just kind of the smallest one I got. It'll draw itself right into that jet. Obviously the jet's ruined, but you know, at least it's not in the carb anymore. These aren't hard to get. I did unfortunately, ha you know, ruin a couple of the, uh, or at least one of the uh, needle seats there. So I went ahead and ordered four new ones for this. Um, other than that though, this is, uh, this is disassembled. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the soda blaster hooked up and then we'll go from there. All right, so now it's time to go head over to my soda blaster. I, it's like a regular Harbor Freight sand blaster, but I keep baking soda in it because it's, uh, it dissolves in water and it's, it doesn't take any aluminum away. So I use it for carburetors a lot and I really like the results until I can afford something like a, you know, uh, an actual vapor honing tank or something like that. But anyway, I'm gonna put these in there assembled try to get as much of the surface as I can and then from there um, kind of blow dry them off and then try to clean out some of the orifices before I run them in the ultrasonic again and that's going to allow you know between the heat and the actual liquid it dissolve any of that baking soda leaving a clean surface so that's what I like to do All right, it's disaster in here. Every time I use this thing, complete disaster, but I think they cleaned up good. Ooh, can you just see that? So there's definitely gonna be a lot of, I mean, you can just see it falling out of there. So, in like your mixture screws like everything everything in here is going to be kind of packed uh, a little bit but it will clean up so i'm going to go ahead and dunk this thing run another 10 minutes in the ultrasonic should be good to go all right everybody that's going to do it for this video we have these things all torn down i did not de-rack everything i don't feel like it needs it after hitting everything with the soda blaster everything came out looking really good so we soda blast everything and then I ran it through the ultrasonic cleaner again and then made sure that I uh, picked out any potential uh, soda, baking soda that was in any of the orifices, anything like that. But overall, you know, they came out really good. I'm pretty confident in them. And then the next step is going to be uh, assembly once I get my needle seats in. You know, I'm waiting for those to arrive. I mentioned that I, you know, I had a couple of them that, that got chewed up. And then of course the... Uh, two pilot jets uh, beyond that you know I did break that float tower off I did go ahead and repair this but I'm gonna make a dedicated video on just doing that because I feel like that might be insightful and yeah so once I have all the components I'm gonna go ahead and stab these things back together and we'll get them on the bike and hopefully that thing is gonna fire right up and, and we'll be good to go so until next time, uh, I appreciate you guys watching, and I know this was not probably the most exciting video. I just hope it was informative for you guys. So anyway, uh, again, I appreciate you watching if you made it this long, and I hope to see you in the next video.